Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A high-profile prosecutor charged with assaulting his mother. He shoved me to the floor and he hit both sides of my face. Boom, boom. Tonight, the terrifying messages left by his mom after the alleged attack. He's lying. He's lying. But we begin with uh, breaking news tonight with two stories that are breaking. A mother held on child neglect charges after her eight-year-old son is mauled by their family dogs. But first, two women arrested for attacking a parking attendant over a ticket. It happened just a short time ago in Greektown. Yeah, all this over a $15 parking ticket. Tim Pamplin on the scene with the night cam. Tim. There you see one of the young sisters on the wheelchair. She's complaining of a severe headache and a bloody face. Doesn't want it on telly tonight. They're taking her up to DRH. The other sister, well, she's going down to the jail. It all stemmed from an argument with a parking enforcement officer who's issuing tickets here on Bobian Street at Monroe. The two sisters jumped to the parking meter lady and started beating her up. Revelers down here in Greektown couldn't believe their eyes. And nor could a sergeant from the Detroit Police Department who was sitting in his patrol car watching everything. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very vicious. He says his parking attendant officer stood her ground. She, uh, she put up a fight and uh, uh, she didn't take it lightly. She, she fought back aggressively uh, trying to protect herself. And uh, at that time I was able to intervene and, and separate the, all the, the perpetrator. Off what of was the, this uh, over? Uh, from my understanding, a parking ticket. Ridiculous. Absolutely. What I'm being told is a $15 parking ticket sending these two sisters to the lockup tonight. That female parking officer, she's going up to the hospital to get checked out. That's for scene in Greektown tonight with the night camp, Tim Pamplin, Local 4. All right, Tim, now also breaking tonight, an eight-year-old boy left home alone, attacked by his family's two dogs. And in fact, he was bitten so severely, he is in Children's Hospital tonight. His mother has been arrested and police are pursuing child neglect charges. Mar McDonald is live at the hospital tonight. Mar, do we know how the little boy's doing? Kimberly, we do. Police are telling us that he is stable here at the hospital uh, and that while his injuries are serious, at least they are not life threatening. Let me take you through it. Viewer video captures one of the dogs being removed from the house and taken away by animal control. Police say there were three children in that house, six, eight and nine. But it was the eight year old boy who was attacked by both of the adult animals. It's a shame. It's an awful shame. You know, I don't understand people and their animals where, you know, they get these dogs and they think these dogs are just going to take care of themselves. Neighbors say the dogs were usually fenced in and not running the neighborhood and that there had been puppies in the house. She has some of the cutest puppies you ever want to see. Um, the grown parents, uh, they always had those under control every time I saw them. And I would see the kids, like I said, I would see the kids with the animals on occasion. Why the adult dogs attacked today is unclear. Police have taken the children's mother into custody and here's why. She left the children home alone while she ran over to a daycare to pick up a fourth child. She got home to find her son seriously hurt. The owner needed to take heed to what type of animal they are have and what type of training they're giving the animal because it's sad that a child got hurt. Back here live tonight, that eight-year-old boy remains here at Children's Hospital. Meanwhile, the other young children who were inside that house have been removed and are staying with a relative. Kimberly, Devin, back to you. I'm assuming we don't know what kind of dogs uh, those were, Mara. And do we know what happens to the dogs now? They were taken away, it looks like. They are pit bulls, Kim, mm -hmm. and they have been taken by Detroit Animal Control. Uh, whether they get destroyed or not, I think, uh, is very much in the up in the air right now. Yeah. Back to you. Okay, Mara, thanks. Devin? Only on four tonight, we're hearing some pretty terrifying voicemails left by the mother of a high profile prosecutor. The messages were left after Michael Bellotta allegedly assaulted his mother. Jermont Terry live at federal court with the investigation and those messages. Jermont? Devin, Mike Bulala fights corruption here at the federal courthouse, but as you mentioned tonight, he's fighting a domestic violence case that centers around his nearly 80-year-old mother, I should say. And for the first time, we are hearing new voicemails from the mother about what she says happened at the hands of her own son. He's lying. He's lying. An emotional mother left this voicemail about her son, Michael Bulada. 
Hulala is the assistant U.S. attorney at the federal courthouse in Detroit. He was the key prosecutor in the Kwame Kilpatrick case, but now he's on the other side of the law, charged with domestic violence against his own mother. Local 4 obtained two voice messages, one left hours after the April incident. Michael has thrown me out of the house. He hit me. Bulala was arrested for allegedly striking his 78-year-old mother, a charge his attorney says is outrageous. He's absolutely a loving son, and I don't want to comment further about the contents. This image shows the mother's bruised hand. She expressed her outrage in two separate voicemails. He lied. My own son. He lied. He said he picked me up and was more of a liar. He shoved me to the floor and he hit both sides of my face. Boom, boom. The son has been ordered to avoid all contact with his mother. He's got a hot shot lawyer. That lawyer questions the motive behind the audio. Who else was involved? Did somebody have her do it? Did they give her a transcript of what to read? And why? For now, Bulala continues to report to work. The acting U.S. attorney tells Local 4, we have the utmost confidence in Assistant U.S. Attorney Michael Bulala's credibility to carry out the important work of the office. Now, Bulala's attorney stresses that he, he believes that he will be exonerated and hopes to at some point repair his family. As for Bulala, as we mentioned, he is out back at work on bond on this misdemeanor charge. Reporting live in downtown tonight, Jermont Terry, Local 4. In Jermont, it took the jury less than three hours to reach a verdict in the trial of the man accused of killing Chelsea Bruck. Daniel Clay was found not guilty of first degree murder, but guilty of felony murder and concealing a body. He killed Chelsea Bruck after meeting her at a Halloween party in 2014. Clay maintained her death was an accident, but the jury saw otherwise. The verdict does speak volumes about what the defendant did that day, and, um, and it uh, certainly uh, brings some measure of justice to the family as well. Clay now faces a mandatory life sentence with no chance of parole. Tonight, the hunt for an armed robber who is also apparently a Yankees fan. Take a look at this surveillance video of the robbery at the mobile gas station on Haggerty near the I-94 service drive. This is Van Buren Township. The woman wearing a Jason Giambi jersey, pink shorts and sandals walks in, points a silver and black gun at the cashier and demands cash. She takes off and runs into a red SUV parked at a gas pump. Here's a, another look at her walking into the store. If you recognize her, you're asked to contact Van Buren police. The fallout from the firing of FBI Director James Comey continues tonight. NBC News is reporting Comey wrote a memo saying President Donald Trump asked him to shut down an investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The meeting was a one on one discussion in the Oval Office. It happened back in February. The White House denies that that happened, saying it's not a truthful or accurate portrayal of their conversation. NBC News also reports that Comey allegedly built a paper trail documenting what he thought was the president's efforts to derail the FBI's investigation of potential Russian ties to his campaign. Well, this will likely be a 10 day nightmare for a lot of drivers. Starting tomorrow morning, the intersection of Hayes Road is going to be closed in both directions at M59 for construction. Drivers will not be able to turn onto Hayes from M59. So instead, that'll mean a detour to Shaner and then to 19 or 21 mile. Intersection expected to reopen the Friday before Memorial Day, so about 10 days hence. It's got to be a long 10 yes, days, as you will. said. All right, well, our drivers caught off guard when a pedestrian decides to go for a walk. It brought freeway traffic to a crawl, and uh, you've got to see the rest of it to believe it. Also hard to believe she survived a little girl run over by a car. It could have been even worse. We'll tell you about it in a minute. And hey, Ben, a hot one coming. Yeah, Devin, we will already be back to the 80s at lunchtime tomorrow and continue beating today's high. How close will we get to a record, and is the humidity coming with it? He's a young man making a big impact on this football field. I honestly, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for him. Year after year, player after player, how he inspired from the sidelines and the film that captured his true impact. Next. Kid Proof. You're looking at the heart of the Macomb County High School football team. Yeah, but it wasn't until a filmmaker started asking questions that people realized his true impact. Our Karen Drew is here with a story about how one person can truly make a difference. 
When it's game time, this is where you'll find Jeff Florkey on the sidelines with his football team, motivating them to win. He makes such a difference, a local filmmaker decided to do a documentary on him. Jeff Florkey proudly wears his pride for the Eisenhower High School football team. He is their motivator. I earned that name. His room is blue like the color of his team. Pictures of him with his players and coaches on display and the words Eisenhower Icon hang on the wall. I'm very happy to be the motivator. He loves um, Eisenhower football and he just um, looks forward to the games. Jeff began helping the football team when he was just 15 years old. Right, here we go, boys. Now he is 32 and still has the same enthusiasm on the sidelines for his team. He first started off as the water boy and um, he really loves to talk. And so he started just talking and trying to like motivate the some of the team members. And then um, he also loves to be the center of attention. So he, he started giving the speeches to the to the whole team. He was a student manager his senior year of high school. I do the pep talk. Since then, he's been known as the motivator. I'm so proud of you guys. He couldn't play, but he wanted to be part of the team. Katie Simopoulos remembers Jeff from her years at Eisenhower High School. She's a filmmaker and owner of 97 Films. She chose Jeff Florkey to be the focus of her first documentary. When people see Jeff and look at Jeff, He's an inspiration. But Katie had no idea what she'd uncover when she started asking players and coaches about Jeff. The story surprised me. Just hearing everybody talk about how Jeff changed their lives and the word that every single person that I interviewed, the word they used was impact. He made heroes of uh, a lot of us and then, then turned the coaches and the players. Yeah, he became a, a hero in his own right. He's the name that I'll pass on to my kid and be like, there was always this one guy that no matter how bad you were beat up, he'd pick you up and be like, hey, let's finish this together. Even players who went on to play for the NFL played tribute to Jeff's legacy with the team. Every great moment that I had at Eisenhower, even, even the bad moments, uh, you know, we lost the state championship or losing some critical games. I mean, I remember Jeff and uh, he was just as much of a part of the team as a player. I didn't know how other people felt about him um, until he, until this video. Jeff has a cognitive impairment. It's important to him that he earned his spot on this football team. Not easy being bet you need and trying to make a name for myself. That's why I'm, I'm happy that I made me who I am today. It makes me feel really proud and really good that even children with disabilities and young adults with disabilities can make an impact on society. And you are our no hitter champion. Yeah! Leaving a lasting impact on Jeff and everyone who knows him. Jeff and his sister no longer live in Shelby Township, but come this fall, she plans on getting Jeff back here to the field to cheer his team on when football season starts. Reporting in Shelby Township, I'm Karen Drew, Local 4 News. Yes. Having that motivator, it's a big deal. Absolutely, that's <laughs> what impact is. And if you'd like to see the impact, uh, the Jeff uh, Florkey story, we've put a link at the community page of ClickOnDetroit.com. Great yeah, stuff, isn't it? Great story. Here's a look at what Kevin Dietz is working on for tomorrow night. He kept a dark secret from his days in the military. There was a lot of anger. I hated the Navy. I hated the VA. Sexually assaulted while serving our country. One uh, grabbed me and pulled me in. Now he's sharing his story and his time to help those who know the pain. The Defenders, tomorrow night at 11. Well, tomorrow will be the day that you find out whether your air conditioner is ready for the oh, season, Oh, you're right. right. <laughs> <laughs> if it's up to snuff. Get it cranked up. I gave mine a little jump start Good to test, yep. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be even warmer. Record high is 93 tomorrow, so just keep that in mind when we show you what's to come here tomorrow afternoon. Huh, wonder what's going on over there. Guess we'll have to wait for <laughs> Bernie to come in here and tell us. Uh, yep, 72. Uh, they are still going at it, by the way. 72 is our current temperature. So our 11 p.m. number is actually above our average high for the day. Winds are out of the south at 9. Those are going to pick up significantly tomorrow, and that is what could lead us to overachieve on temperatures. 
Usually when we start seeing these strong south and southwest winds, uh, we tend to overachieve on those uh, numbers compared to what the uh, computer models are spitting out. But everybody's in the 70s except just a, one location right here is Port Huron. It's showing up 66. Uh, it has been a rough day of thunderstorms out to our west and south. Uh, almost two dozen people hurt when a uh, tornado uh, hit a trailer park in parts of Wisconsin. One person actually confirmed killed. And out in Oklahoma, another tornado touchdown uh, sent out a tweet just a few minutes ago of baseball size, actually all close to grapefruit size hail, three and a half to four inches in diameter. Luckily, we're going to miss out on the rough stuff, but we do have chances of thunderstorms on Thursday. Tomorrow is going to be dry, even though it is going to be the warmest day that we're going to see of the forecast and the warmest uh, that we've been so far in 27. Next chance thunderstorms, at least the best chance is going to be Thursday in the evening hours. This is eight o'clock. There's a slight chance uh, that we could get grazed with a storm very early Thursday before the sun comes up. But that really is our only chance of rain until we get into the weekend. Unfortunately, it does look like half the weekend is going to be uh, featuring rain. 65 is where we're going to be going tonight. Unseasonably mild, but we should be mostly clear. Tomorrow we'll see some clouds, but it is going to be the heat that's the story. Here are the high temperatures we're expecting. Upper 80s, close to 90 degrees, and I wouldn't be surprised if a couple spots do hit 90 tomorrow afternoon. Uh, these numbers not going to be very widely ranging. Everybody's going to be in the mid to upper 80s across the area, including our west and north zones. Uh, we'll see those temperatures still firmly into the mid 80s as far north as Sanilac County and even into St. Clair County as well tomorrow. So temperatures will stay in the 80s for Wednesday and Thursday, and then we'll drop almost 20 degrees as we go to 67 for that high temperature on Friday. So back below average, believe it or not. And then we start recovering a little bit going into the weekend. Sunday is when we'll see our best chance of rain. Saturday looks like it'll be dry, so it is going to be half and half weekend. Yeah, get your outdoor stuff done on Saturday, but man, it is going to be sweating <laughs> with the next two days. Yeah. Well, watch the record. All right, hey, thanks, Ben. Uh, well, not many people use phone books anymore, and this could be a reason why. Uh, the major mistake that made its way into thousands of directories. You see, we used to have these books that... Well, <laughs> you have to explain that to yep. young uh, kids. <laughs> <laughs> and one girl will always have an incredible story to tell, how she managed to simply walk away after getting run over by a car.